Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, I am amazed by the believer. Verily, Allah does not decree anything for the believer except what is good for him. It's that time of the week. Pull out a chair, take a load off, and welcome to this week's An-Nur, the light. Assalamu alaikum. This week's phenomenal guest chose a profession that just recently was called out for being sexist by claiming that women do not belong in it. She, however, chooses to show these men differently. The City of Cape Town's Transport and Urban Development Authority is responsible for managing all aspects of the transport network. Although there are a number of different departments, only one is headed up by a woman. I'm Head of Transport Network Management uh, Section for the City of Cape Town. I manage and maintain the traffic signals. So that is your construction of new signals, the maintenance of the signals, the proper operation of the signals, um, and any timing um, complaints and, and operational issues that, that um, require attention from my department. So I head that department. And then on the other side, I um, manage the curbside parking for the city of Cape Town as well. For Hanifa, the job incorporates truly working in a man's world, and at one stage, this affected how she went about doing it. With time, she realized that women may do things differently, and this has had a major impact on the person she has become. The position was previously held only by men, so I, I was the first woman to ever take up this position um, that I'm in at the moment. And there's about 90% of it is men in the department. So. Um, it, it was a bit harrowing at the beginning and having to then call a meeting with all the staff and introduce myself and explain to them my background. I felt like I needed to go a little bit more in depth because I think the, their first reaction was, um, you know, what, are, what is a woman doing in this position? I mean, what do you know about traffic signals? And I think I, I, I won the trust over. Um, I explained to them actually that I do have experience in traffic signals and my background in traffic engineering and I have a lot to offer in this position. I don't see uh, gender or religion or anything like that. I think more importantly is uh, the question should be how does it like working with Hanifa? And the answer is that it's a very good relationship. Uh, it was maybe a bit stressed before. I'm an old guy, she's young, so I think it was probably the hardest thing was that I'm this old, old guy. Um, but uh, it's been a growing relationship that um, I enjoy. If, if there's anything that I had to say that is particular to Hanifa's uh, residency as this, the line manager is that there's more cohesion now than there was before. Coming from a traditional family where the role of a woman is seen to be at home has proven to be a challenge, but it also gave Hanifa the opportunity to change perceptions. I think I freaked out at the moment that time. I said, that's a man's thing. I just thought I have two sons. Why would my daughter go into that? And then we saw that she was clever enough to make her own choice. A bed lamp or lights were on late at night, sometimes in the middle of the morning, middle of the night, I find, beep, a light is on. So I said, okay, she is now interested in what she's doing. Okay, so we just, okay, inshallah, we'll be there and we support you as you go along. And alhamdulillah, today I'm very, very proud of her. The word, I don't really want to use it, but I am proud of her what she has achieved thus far. She has, she's now <laughs> thought in a man's world, but now it's just a female world as well. As a working mom, there are often many compromises to make, but one that Hanifa doesn't give in to is time with her family. Family is it's very important. Um, I've got four very young kids, so we make sure that uh, we spend weekends with our family after hours when I come home from work. It's all about the, the children um, and family time and finding out how the day was and making sure that I know what's going on in their lives all the time. Pinch your salt. And then there's a spoon. Slowly, no, without missing. What works for me is that I work close to home and everything, my resources and my, and my network is all around me. So the school is, is within walking distance of my house. I, I work very near to home, so I get home early. Then I've also got a very good support structure at home. So I've got the two ladies that um, 
that look after the kids and just see to my house when I'm not here. And then obviously my husband as well. I mean, he, I always say none of this would have been possible if it wasn't for him, for his support and his encouragement. It's important for me to know what's going on in their lives, but also for them to know that you, you can have both. You can have a career and you can actually be an active mother as well. They're not phased about the fact that, oh no, mommy is at work and now we can't ask. I'm, we make it work. Hanifa enrolled at university to become a civil engineer. Even today, there are still some people who frown upon the idea of women in the profession. She, however, is a shining light and a role model to women. I think the, the main message that I'd like to give uh, other females is that, you know, lots of times, um, especially while I was studying, you, you always felt that when you get married, you're going to have to give up your career. And you always feel like you need to choose one or the other. For me, it's to, um, to show the woman that you actually, you can have, you can move up in the corporate ladder, you can have a career and still have um, a family and young children. It, you just need to make it work for you, you know, make your, have a good support system and, and make sure that it, it works for you and for your, your family. Legendary singer James Brown sings, This is a man's world, but it would be nothing without a woman or a girl. Hanifa Gaby shows this to be true by setting the bar and maintaining it to the person she is. Taking some time could mean reading a book, checking out some amazing tech, or making life easier with an app. This is the reason we came up with our next segment. Enjoy. Even Angels Ask, a journey to Islam in America by Professor Jeffrey Lang, draws on the personal experiences of the author as he discusses his journey to Islam as an American. He discusses conflicts between faith and reason and the challenges of converting to Islam. The compelling story is eye-opening and difficult to put down. This week's technology is accessible with Windows and is a prayer gadget that you can use at work, at home and as part of your daily life. The prayer gadget displays Islamic prayer times, Qibla direction, special Islamic events and the Hijr calendar. Custom make your own reminders and select an Adhan sound. The gadget has an offline database of about 2,000 cities around the world. Applications make our lives just a little bit easier. As Muslims, it is essential to keep the deen close to our hearts and what better way than to have constant access to information to help perform our duties correctly. Muslim Essentials is an app that brings you the Qibla direction, prayer times, the prayer of the Prophet, peace be upon him, a Salah tracker and even a Tasbih counter. In our busy lives, filled with an information overload, it certainly is essential to have the correct info on hand. Our station in life is determined not only by who we are, but also what we do to uplift others. These are important lessons that we pass on to our children, but also the people whom we uplift. Muniba Bayat is one such a person. According to UNESCO, statistics show that four out of seven million South African girls are unable to afford basic sanitary wear. Dare to be Empowered is an organization that is working towards changing that. Dare to be Empowered is um, a business that I actually put together. Um, it was based on the fact that I do a lot of empowerment work. Uh, and I just thought, uh, in terms of all my experience that I've had, um, in terms of mentoring and training women, it came about in terms of people coming to me and asking me, how can you actually assist us in building um, opportunities for us to actually empower ourselves and empower other women? Um, what DARE stands for is Developing Ambitious, Resilient Entrepreneurs. I, I realized that honey was not uh, the only answer to what I could actually offer women in different communities. I realized that if a woman can't even buy a pack of sanitary pads, how would she be able to afford to buy a, pa a pair of earrings? Um, and that made me sort of start thinking about where I was, what I was doing, and what I needed to re-look really at. 
After extensive research, Muniba partnered with Dr. Fatima Baba to develop the best solutions to the crisis. Reusable and sustainable sanitary wear was developed and they are empowering underprivileged women through this process too. At the moment, currently in the centre that we are at is Mission of Mercy, where they have set up the Sewing Skills Centre. And when I had said to them, this is what my plan was, is that you've got to come and see the centre. So sharing this idea that you all have got Sewing skill Centres and let your Sewing skill Centres become self-funding and let this be an opportunity for the women in your communities to actually start sewing a washable sanitary pad. Um, and the sanitary pad would obviously then be able to supply a geographic area of at least 50 kilometers within the centers because your washable pad is definitely something that's going to be the future of this country. When we started the center, it was meant to be the elderly craft center. It is now the center because everyone now, not only the elderly people who come here, the help that we're getting from them is that they, have to, they will come and teach us how to do the sanitary, sanitary pets so that we can be able to do them ourselves, so that we can be able to sell for the center to be, can sustain from what we'll get if we are selling those sanitary pets to the community. Everyone who, is, who can be able to come to, to come into this center, she can get, or he can get help. Sometimes they can get skills. They can do everything by themselves so that they can go out and sell, so that they can sometimes get money for bread and whatever. The project not only supplies reusable sanitary products to girls from underprivileged backgrounds, but also involves creating awareness on how these products should be used. With your menstrual health, I realised as I was going into the areas or into the schools that there were young girls that had absolutely no education on menstrual health. We had to start educating the girls. So it's not just go and hand out a pack. You go and you talk to the girls about cleanliness, about hygiene. So that's where the mentorship comes in and that's where I started mentoring a few young girls uh, from other schools, from more affluent areas and said you can come with me to a school and you can talk to the young girls about menstrual health. You know, how should they keep themselves clean? Once they've got a pack of pads, what do they need to do? So it's become a very, very rewarding project in the sense that we go and we do this with them. As an avid businesswoman who has a success in selling jewellery, Muniba has also invested in empowering women from all walks of life. And to give you a background of where I come from, I'm a regional sales leader for Honey Fashion Accessories. We actually go into areas and we teach women how to build a little business for themselves. Stay empowered, okay? <laughs> she's a mentor and she's a mother and a friend also. Because of my relationship with Manuba, I've become more confident and more optimistic. And it also has helped me to empower other women. Having to see Manuba helping other people has also helped me because I also come out from a community that is not so well of. And yeah, I'd also want to be like her and also empowering other women to be like me and her. We empower And I think the passion of um, Dare is, you know, not being selfless, but being a person that would go out there and actually help other women to say that you can actually do the same. Say, if I can empower one woman, so can you. And if we each have that same mindset and that same drive and the same passion for each other as a sisterhood, you can have amazing results out of this, yeah. From providing for their basic needs to empowering future business owners, Muniba's heart truly lies in uplifting women. Her efforts to support and assist other women in all areas of life make her a true example of women standing together to change the world. The tafsir is a time to pause and reflect through the words of the Holy Quran. This week's recital is of Surah Muzammil. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها المزمل قم الليل قم الليل إلا قليلا قم الليل إلا قليلا نصفه أو إن 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Peace be upon you. The beautiful recitation that we've just listened to is of chapter 73 of the Holy Quran, verse number one to four. It addresses the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, just after he received this first revelation. It was a new encounter, an encounter with an angel, a being from the unseen world, and he, as would be expected, was taken by surprise. He was shaken up and he rushed home and he called his wife Khadija radiallahu anha to shroud him as he was shivering. The address speaks of a relationship beyond this experience and addresses him saying, Ya ayyuhal muzzambil, O he who is shrouded in the garment. For you to be ready, to ready yourself for what's to come of um, all the various such possible situations that you may encounter with those who are to reject your call, you have to build and develop your relationship with your Creator. Finding yourself in a situation of fear and panic you go to humankind, you go to those whom you think may assist you. But what these verses are addressing is before you go to any of your fellow man, turn to him, turn to the Creator, the one in whose control all hearts are. Stand up in prayer at night and address him. Pour out your concerns to him and draw strength from the fact that you are able to access him without any intermediary. Draw strength from the fact that he hears all, sees all, knows all, and is all able to assist you. And when you then address his word, address it in the most beautiful manner possible, for it deserves all your efforts in beautification. If you were to address it with the desired respect and beauty, this beauty will flow and overflow into other aspects of your life. So draw on divine help. Turn to him in your time of need and when you address his word, address it with the utmost beauty and the utmost respect. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, we are blessed with some amazing qaris and Sheikh Lund's translations are always so succinct. Lamiza Toy is waiting to show us this week's recipe. Assalamu alaikum. In my household, we love cheese. It's one of our favorite things to eat, whether it's cheddar, whether it's mozzarella, whether it is parmesan sprinkled over pasta, or just plain old toasted cheddar cheese sandwiches. We love our cheese. And hence the recipe I'll be sharing with you today. And today I'm going to be making thin chicken strips crusted in a parmesan and breadcrumb mix that you shallow fry in some olive oil and serve with a delicious caprese salad. What's nice about this, it's a good snack to have. And I don't mean a lunchtime or a dinner snack, I mean sort of a mid-meal snack or on a hot summer's day. So to start, I'm going to take you through my ingredients. And all that I have is chicken fillets that I've cut into thin strips. So you can either strip them the way I have here, the other option is to just sliver them so that you've got bigger, rounder portions. I've got some cornflake breadcrumbs. The better alternative to this would be panko breadcrumbs. I've got some egg to dip our chicken in. I've got some parmesan that we're going to be mixing with our breadcrumbs. I've got black pepper, but that's just to season the salad. I've got some balsamic and olive oil that I've just mixed together. I've got fresh slices of lovely tomatoes. 
And then I've got basil, which I'm very proud to say comes from my tree. So homegrown basil leaves and some slices of fresh mozzarella. So first things first, we're going to mix our crumb. Cornflake crumbs, and to this I'm going to add grated Parmesan cheese. So that's a good mix over there. So I've got my egg mix and chicken. And when you do this part, you're wanting to push the crumbs down so they actually stick and form a nice coating around here. So chicken fillets go into the egg and into your breadcrumb mix. So remember, when you put it into the mix, to push down on your chicken fillet so you can get it to stick. If you're going to be using bigger chicken portions, then lightly fry them in your pan and finish it off in the oven because you don't want your cheese to burn. And also, if you use this on a more sizable piece of chicken, in fact, you can even use chicken pieces for this, lightly fry them off in the pan after you've coated them and stick them in the oven on like 200 degrees and just let them bake until they're done, which should take about 40 minutes. So I'm going to pop in my first few pieces. Preferably use a non-stick pan. Not that any pan in this day and age is ever non-stick for more than a week, but we do try. And immediately, as the fillets hit the heat and that parmesan starts to melt, you get that smell of toasted cheese, and that's what makes this yummy. You know how when you make toasted cheese and bits of the cheese ooze out and they hit the bottom of the pan and they just start to melt and they form what my kids call the crusty bits? That is what the, the topping on this chicken fillets tastes like. So you get that soft chicken on the inside and that crunchy, cheesy flavours on the outside. Mm, delish. And these, believe it or not, are done. So let me get these out of the way and get these on my board. Okay, so while those last few are going, I'm gonna put together my Capri salad. And all that we do here is literally alternate slices of tomato, always a pretty basil leaf, a slice of mozzarella, and just keep going all the way down your plate. What I love about this salad, it's almost a taste of Italy, I suppose, the parmesan, the basil, the buffalo mozzarella, everything that's yummy and decadent and light and fresh and you don't feel stuffed after you've eaten it. Nor do you feel quite as guilty as you should. And now, this is just balsamic vinegar and olive oil that I've mixed together. Light drizzle of this all the way along the top. Just a little bit of acid to cut through all of that cheesiness. Sprinkling of black pepper. And unity. And these are all done. And this is the best part about this, is how easy it is to make, to plate. I can guarantee you, even easier to eat. And so, there you have it, my taste of Italy. Parmesan trusted chicken and salad caprese. So until I see you next time, assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, yet another week in the bag. Please send us your events and be sure to follow us on social media. Assalamu alaikum from me, Sahra Robinson. Mm-hmm. <laughs>